Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Go Beyond. I hope that you're having an amazing Friday afternoon. My name is Alyssa Robinson, and you're just going to be hearing from me today. And what we're going to be talking about is the spiritual gift of discernment. So this is a spiritual gift that Daniel wanted us to talk through specifically because for the past four weeks, we have been exploring the book of Acts together. And in the book of Acts, there is so much discerning that had to happen between the apostles in establishing the church. What uh, rules are we putting into place? What rules are we stepping away from? What traditions are we keeping? What traditions are we leaving behind? And so a lot of that had to depend on spiritual discernment and uh, listening for the Holy Spirit. And I'm really excited to talk about this topic specifically because uh, discernment just so happens to be one of my spiritual gifts. It's actually my only spiritual gift, to be honest, because I had a few other ones, but uh, they the margin for spiritual gift is of discernment is huge for me. Um, and so I'm really excited to get your input about it from someone who maybe spiritual discernment doesn't come as naturally to you. Um, just because it's not one of your top spiritual gifts doesn't mean that you don't have the ability to discern. And so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and I'm going to share with you um, a document, a blog post that Daniel put together for us today. Let me see if I can get this pulled up for you. There you go. Spiritual discernment. So you can find this document at tmumc.org slash discern. But basically what it talks about is what discernment means to us in the life of the church. And so as you can see, um, we have some definitions of discernment, which is to separate or distinguish from, to test in a crisis, to be able to separate truth from fiction, good from evil. Um, and that's something that strangely has always come kind of natural to me, but I have trouble explaining it. I don't know if you're like me. Maybe let me know in the comments if uh, discernment comes naturally to you or not. But often I feel in my gut whether something is right or wrong. I can feel if I meet a person and I feel like they're being dishonest with me, I know instantly. But what I really struggle with is putting words around how, how do I know this? Um, because a lot of times that's not really helpful to the community if I say, you know what, I know this is the right decision, but I can't tell you why. Because what we have to learn is how are we bringing people along with us to better understand and communicate our discernment. And that's one of the things that I love about this document that Daniel has shared with us today. So again, you can find this at tmumc.org slash discern. And in here, it talks about the definition of discernment, examples of discernment we see from scripture. But if we keep going down, one of the things that's very, very helpful to me is better understanding how to practice spiritual discernment if it does not come naturally to us. And so this is where I want to stop for a moment. We have models for spiritual discernment. And so it gives you a step-by-step -step understanding of how to discern God's will for you. Um, and it starts with framing, getting focused. What is it that we're deciding on? Grounding, establishing principles, um, looking at what is our mission? What is our vision? What is our value? So that we're really looking at why, why are we doing what we're doing? What is it that we're trying to accomplish before we get to the how behind it? So I hope that you find this very helpful. And I've mentioned a few times already that my gift is discernment. And the reason that I know that, and I want to hop over real quick, uh, is because I took the gifted to serve discovery with Treach. 
Um, so I've popped over. If you go to tmumc.org slash gifted, it says gifted to serve, and you have the option to take the survey. It takes about 15 minutes, and it asks you a lot of questions where you can learn what your spiritual gifts are. And maybe your gift is discernment as well. Maybe you have other spiritual gifts, but I'd like for you to leave in the comments, what are some of the gifts that you have uh, and how are you using them? So back to our document here, going down a little bit further, there are some uh, ways for us to practice discernment. Like it says, it gives you step-by-step -step ways to focus on that. But one of the things that I want to look at is questions to ponder. Um, and this is specifically focusing on passages from Acts, which is what we've been looking at. But I think that these are really interesting questions to ask yourself as you continue to read through the book of Acts, because I know our book of Acts study is continuing through the month of July. And so here are some questions that I want you to start asking yourself as you're reading through the book of Acts. What was discerned? What were they deciding upon? How did it work? So a lot of what we talked about this week is they were debating, they were arguing. So they were working together to discern where the spirit is guiding them. What is inherent in the discernment process? What comes more naturally to us when we are trying to make these decisions? Would the outcome have been different had the disciples voted? Uh, this is something that I find really interesting that we are often talking about in the life of a church. Uh, there are sometimes individuals that want to make decisions versus going to a group and making a decision as a group. Which is better? How do we decide how we're moving forward? Is it always does it always need to be majority rules or do leaders need to step forward and say, I understand that, you know, as a group, you think this is how we should be moving forward. But as the leader, I have practiced discernment and the spirit is telling me to move a different direction. And I feel like things like that always create growing pains within a church, within a corporation, wherever, within a family, wherever it is. Uh, so think about that a little bit. Would the outcome of the way that the church exists today be different if it had not been up to individuals and it had been a group vote? Uh, and I think that's kind of fun to imagine how things might have looked different. What is appealing about discernment and what is disturbing about it? And I love the use of the word disturbing. Uh, what is disturbing about discernment. Uh, and I think for myself, I already described to you a little bit. One of the things that's really disturbing for me is that I don't always have a good grasp on why am I getting these gut feelings that I have? Why am I getting a gut feeling this is the right decision or this is the wrong decision? Why am I getting the gut feeling that someone is lying to me or that someone is being truthful to me? And I think that's one of the things that's most disturbing about it for me personally. But I want to hear from you. What are some of the answers to these questions? Um, and I guess like that's all, that's all I have for today is thinking about the spiritual gift of discernment and how we can practice it if it's a gift that does not come naturally to you. So I've really enjoyed Go Beyond this month, walking through the book of Acts. It's been a really fun and interesting book to challenge. Uh, starting this Sunday, we are going into our new worship series called Summer Playlist, where we are looking at the Psalms and we are making a connection between uh, the Psalms written 3,000 years ago and compiled 500 years ago to modern music that we hear today. And we're going to have some really fun worship elements. So I hope that you'll join us at 9 a.m. for our outdoor socially distanced worship service on Sunday. So if you're coming to that, wear your mask, bring a chair or a blanket to sit on, and download the TMUMC app. 
Those are the three things that you need to do to get ready for our worship service on Sunday morning. If you cannot attend in person or don't yet feel comfortable attending an outdoor worship service, we completely understand. And so we will continue to have the 9.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. worship services live streamed to all of our streaming platforms. And you can check that out at tmumc.org slash watch. Now for Go Beyond for the next month, I know that it's going going to be a challenge for me specifically because my job is to challenge the scripture and let me tell you psalms is tough to challenge because it is all about the way we express ourselves to god and how am i supposed to challenge the way another individual is expressing their connection to god so it might get a little creative i hope that you'll tune in with us and as always you can check out all previous episodes of go beyond at tmumc.org/gobeyond and i will see you next week <laughs>